Hello, I'm David Katzmeyer with CNET, and I'm sitting with the LG LM6700. This is a 55-inch uh, LCD TV. There's also a 47-inch member of the series. This review will apply to both. This is a mid-range TV in LG's 2012 lineup. It's actually the least expensive to include its LED plus local dimming, which uh, should improve black levels, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, the other nice thing about this TV is it's also the least expensive with its really thin bezel. So if you look at the edge of this TV, it's about five millimeters from the edge of the picture to the edge of the frame. Uh, the frame itself is wrapped in this sort of silver ribbon and along the bottom the silver gets uh, quite a bit wider where you can see the LG logo here. Another unique part of this TV's design is the silver ribbon stand along the bottom here. This actually keeps the TV suspended sort of floating above the uh, surface that it's on. Uh, the stand also swivels so all told this is one of the sleeker looking and more unique looking TVs we've seen in a long time. Another feature unique to LG is this Magic Motion remote. It's sort of like a Nintendo Wiimote. LG doesn't include a standard remote. You only get the Magic Motion, but it does work very well. Uh, it kind of summons the cursor as soon as you pick it up, and you can go to the home menu very quickly. And as you can see, the menu system takes full advantage of the Magic Motion to actually found really precise and easy to navigate this uh, new menu system. So the response time is really good. Again, we were pretty impressed by this remote. On the downside, this remote doesn't control other devices like cable boxes, so you're going to have to make a decision if you're used to using a single universal remote. LG's smart TV system has pretty solid content for audio and video, although it lacks Amazon Instant as well as Pandora. We appreciate there's a 3D World app that includes a few uh, pieces of demo content, nothing you've heard of, however. There's also an app store. Generally, that's pretty bad. Uh, the selection of apps is a little bit less than quality we've seen on Panasonic and Samsung, for example. There's also a web browser, which actually worked better than any of the TV-based web browsers we've seen, although it's, of course, worse than the one in your tablet or smartphone, so we doubt most people will use it. On the connectivity front, this set does include built-in Wi-Fi, which is a nice touch. Around back, you'll find four HDMI, as well as a PC input for VGA sources. There's also a single analog input that can accept either component or composite video via breakout cable. On the picture quality front, I was a little bit disappointed with the performance of this LG compared to last year's model. Its black levels are relatively light, and its shadow detail not quite as good. It also has a relatively reflective screen, so again, unlike last year's models that were matte, it does tend to reflect in-room lighting relatively brightly. On the plus side, it does have a pretty accurate color. Uh, there's plenty of controls, although they didn't work quite as well as they did last year, so all told, the 2D performance of this TV isn't quite what we expected for the price level. There's also a 3D capability on this TV that actually performed very well in terms of crosstalk. We did see some artifacts uh, caused by that passive 3D, but you have to look pretty close and or sit pretty close to see most of them. The set also includes six pairs of 3D glasses, which is one of the benefits of having a passive 3D system. Of course, your whole family can enjoy 3D, whereas with active sets, you've got to spend a lot of money on 3D glasses. That's a quick look at LG's LM6700 series. I'm David Katzmeyer.